Oh, I can hear. Okay. Okay, we'll make a start. That's better. <laughs> okay, welcome to the uh, Linux Australia 2013 annual general meeting. It is. If you were here for Rusty's uh, interpretive dance, you should go to the other room. <laughs> okay. Talking to the speaking hole. I've got this speaking hole here. Speaking hole. Okay. Um, yes. Welcome to the AGM. I will try to make this short and sweet. Um, there's not that. There's a little bit to go through, but it should get through pretty quickly. Um, the first order of business is confirmation of the minutes. Um, these were sent through in the agenda the other day and are available at this link, which is here. Um, lots of lovely stuff that happened last meeting. Um, I'd like to move a motion that the membership accept the minutes of the 2012 AGM as accurate. Seconded by James Bromberger. All in favour? <laughs> Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> I think that was a slow arm. Abstentions? Uh, one, two, carried unanimously with, well, not quite unanimously, two abstentions. <laughs> Unopposed. Um, okay, reports from the 2012 office bearers. I realised as I was putting all these tabs together, the agenda is a little bit messy. Um, so we won't, accept, we won't accept the motion for the membership of the office bearers until after the treasurer's report. That probably makes a little more sense. No, just names, okay. I believe, yes, just names. Yes, there's, a, there's an attendance list going around. Um, if you just write your name on it, if you are a member, if you would like to become a member and you have an internet-enabled device, you can go to the Linux Australia website and do that right now, um, although there's probably no massive rush. Um, and there's... Copy, there's one of every five yeah, so there's a copy of all the important reports out the front and an agenda down the front as well, if you'd like a copy of anything. Um, office bearers reports. So I'll go first and close that tab. President's report. Um, I sent this to the list um, a couple of days ago, so I'll just run through quickly. Um, this is my third and last year as president, because I'm not running again for various reasons. Um, ah. Oops, stop that. Is that better? Okay, excellent. I'll make that a bit bigger. Cool. Um, first thing I'd like to do is thank um, the numerous council members that have been involved in Linux Australia um, while I've been president and before that as treasurer. Um, none of the stuff I think we've been able to achieve, and it's been a fair amount over the last three years, I think would have been impossible um, without any of their assistance. Um, the council probably ends up doing a lot more work than it should. It would be great if the, if the community could get involved more. Sometimes that's partly our fault. Um, but I'd like to just thank them all for the support um, that we've had over the years. And if I could get a round of applause, that would be wonderful. Um, we met 17 times via teleconf um, in the last 12 or so months. Um, there was a face-to-face -face as well in Sydney. Um, Election-wise, the only strange thing we had this year is that uh, Clinton was elected via a by-election after the last AGM um, because I think, what did we do? We didn't have enough people running um, for OCM and we decided to hold a by-election rather than um, elect someone from the floor. Yes, the by-election was strange, not Clinton. <laughs> well, um, conferences. Um, we ran a couple more conferences this year than we have in previous years. Um, that seems to be everyone expanding. Um, so the usual ones, um, LCA 2012, some bar camps, some word camps, PyCon AU, um, Drupal Down Under 2012. We've lost Drupal Down Under. Um, DrupalCon have come to town. Um, the Drupal Association tries to support their conferences um, all over the world now. So uh, DrupalCon is on next week, I believe. Um, so that particular one's being run by the Drupal Association. Um, depending on how that goes, they may or not be back. Be back. Um, we've also added Joomla Day Melbourne, which has happened already or is about to happen? Yep. Happened two weeks ago, yep. Um, and yeah, so look, I think that's one of the really important things that Linux Australia does. We actually do it quite well now. There's a lot of infrastructure in place to make it really, really easy um, for, um, 
for conferences to be run. I mean, to the extent that I had to go back through the list and it's like, oh, did we run that conference? That went really smoothly. Um, we didn't really have to do very much at all. So um, Josh does a lot of work there as treasurer. Um, and I think that's where most of the interaction is these days. It's really around the bank accounts and getting those set up. Everything else like insurance um, pretty much tends to just work. Uh, LCA 2013, I think has been pretty awesome. What do you guys all think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the team has done an amazing job. I'm not particularly surprised. Almost every member of the core team has participated in an LCA at some stage in their lives. Um, but uh, it's been a really good job. There were some, I think even for these guys, there were some surprises at Ghost where they're like, oh, that's stuff we hadn't thought about. Um, so things have changed since, uh, since Canberra 2005, which is good. Uh, the 2014 bid process was a little bit difficult this year. Um, we had to go through a second round of bids because we received no bids uh, the first time round. Um, but I'm pleased to say we did get there in the end and we do have a conference. We will have a conference in 2014 um, and that will be announced at the closing on Friday. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Subcommittee reports, they're all up on the website. Um, I believe someone from the Mirror team was indicating that they may have to do a report because they haven't done one in a while but not a lot, of ha a lot happens with the mirror team. Um, it just sits there and works, mostly. Um, important things off the top of my head, I know that the admin team are rolling out the new hardware, which I think I mentioned further down. Did Login come on board this year? Login, the Newcastle lug. Yeah, I think they're a new lug that came under our umbrella this year. Um, Slug has been there um, for a couple of years now. Um, grants and donations. Um, we split the grants process up this year into 10k of grants and 10k of sponsorships um, and all up, there's a small list there, Ada Camp, Gold Coast Tech Space, Drupal Code Sprint, um, the open standards submission that uh, Brendan Scott did to the UK Parliament. Um, then the, and then the sponsorship side came into the sponsors from last year's conference. Um, so the grants program went quite well. We came pretty close to both of those budgets, um, but it would be nice to see. I don't, I don't think we get enough grants. Um, submission requests, and it would be great if we saw more from the community. Um, the council proposed a name change for Linux Australia this year um, to try and uh, meet what we thought were the broader goals of Linux Australia um, in the community. Um, we took that to a vote um, a couple of months ago, and the outcome was for no change. Um, other news, um, the Rusty Wrench was awarded, awarded to Mary Gardner, as we heard this morning. Um, the new server hardware has been deployed. We had the council face to face. We had media training this year for the first time in a while, um, which some of the camera guys were able to come to. And I think that was pretty helpful for you guys. Um, finally, I'd just like to thank the council um, and everyone else that's helped out this year. Um, the support from community most of the time is really, really great. Um, and I wish the next council um, all the best. That was mine. Uh, do you want to go next, Josh? Um, there was a mic down here. Oh, sorry. Was this one before? Yeah, that works. Um, yeah. Couldn't not ask you to accept yours. Uh, we'll do them all at the end. Okay. Uh, all right. Hello? Okay, here we go. Um, all right, so I'll just go over quickly the Treasurer's report that was sent to the list. Um, so some of the things we achieved, uh, John's gone over, so I won't go over those again. Uh, the financial year changed last year, so we now run from the 1st of October to the 30th of September every year. This is our first full 12 months of that, so we're starting to see how that process works, and, it, and it's worked quite well for us this year. Uh, we're able to get the audit done in time. Turns out it's still actually quite difficult to get it done in time because Everyone's busy with Christmas, but we got there. Um, not a lot has changed with the management. Uh, we still use the same software, Zero. We have the same accountants and the same auditor. It's all quite smooth now. We've been doing it for some years. Uh, the subcommittees that John uh, went over, these are the treasurers from the ones that I was working with in the 20, uh, well, for the last term. Uh, so these are the people who make sure the accounts are reconciled and things are running on balance and everything like that. Uh, I just ping them and make sure they're okay. Uh, so my job's easy. So if we could get a round of applause for these gentlemen and ladies. Uh, um, 
Yeah, so the audit, the only real feedback we had there is uh, we didn't, and by we I mean mostly me, do a very good job of documenting the petty cash used at last year's LCA. We've been asked to keep better track of it. We've taken that advice on board and, and uh, making uh, progress for that already. Um, uh, the budget tracking uh, from 2012, this is sort of just Linux Australia's management budget. It's what we use to sort of go, here's where we can spend money. Uh, it is, the numbers and the actuals here, I've just copied from the profit and loss over into what roughly equates to the same categories. Our actual profit and loss report is a bit more detailed. Uh, there is one small mistake in this in regards to the travel. That's closer to 600. I'll point that out in the profit and loss form. Other than that, this is only really to serve as an indication. Most things ran on budget. There's a couple of notes where they haven't. Uh, so we haven't spent as much in grants or sponsorship as we could have, as we budgeted um, for. And as John mentioned, it would be good to be doing more there. The uh, rest looks pretty good. The admin team hardware was a, a little bit of a mistake in that I thought we were going to be spending quite a large sum of money uh, in the 2012 financial year, but we actually spent that money in the previous year before I had, so just after this report was done, but before the, the end of the last term. I think that makes sense. So that, that's, what, that's that difference there. That was why that line item was large. And media training turns out to be a lot cheaper than, than we expected because the gentleman was nice and we bundled some of the flights in. Uh, other than that, it ran pretty much on budget. Uh, the profit, we, we end up getting a lot more from a lot of different uh, conferences than we expected, which is very nice. Uh, the big difference in Drupal Down Under is due to them deciding not to spend money on a particular item they were going to spend money on. They were going to transcode their videos, but decided, no, not transcode, sorry, um, transcribe their videos, thank you, uh, and decided that it wasn't worth spending some, something ridiculous, 15. Oh, only six. Okay. Well, they still would have made a, quite a profit, but they decided not to spend that. Um, LCA made more. We LCA is a bit of a guessing game sometimes with the profit it will return. They they sort of will aim for fifty. Often they get a little bit more. Um, so the next budget, uh, the biggest difference is that the donations are grouped into one category. I actually wanted to do this last year, but forgot. Um, this way we can the council can have more discretion over where they spend money. Uh, I should actually point out, though, that this is really only a suggested budget. Uh, this is my last term as treasurer, so the new treasurer who will be announced shortly, uh, I'm sure will choose whether or not to use this budget uh, or make his own, etc. Uh, otherwise, the figures in here are more or less just reflect the actuals from last year, and it's not particularly interesting. Uh, the LCA income here was lower because I was I misunderstood when I was told what it would be, uh, what they meant, so it'll actually be higher, probably more like 50 to 70. Um, Mike Carden will be the person to talk to about that as he hears that subcommittee. Uh, and the interest, I actually should have made a comment on the actuals for the interest here. Um, we didn't account for interest in the 2011 year, so we brought that into this year and that's why that's so high. Uh, our term deposits are actually doing quite well. Um, I think they make about seven. I actually might have put that in the notes. Here we go. Uh, yeah, our turn deposit uh, matured with nearly 10K uh, last year. We'll get the same sort of maturity in uh, July, possibly a bit more clearly. I, I'm not sure what the rates are at the moment. Um, so that, yeah, the, the, I mean, we're doing quite well off our, just off our interest. Um, so I think that budget doesn't need a lot of talking about because it's, it's subject to change. Uh, the notes and the figures uh, just goes over some of the things that might be confusing in the profit and loss and the balance, so I'll actually just skip down to that. Um, this is something that's much better shown if you want to read it yourself, and then I can answer questions. And I must thank AJ for his feedback uh, on the report and for raising questions. It's very good to have a set of eyes who understands Linux Australia's financials to actually make sure I'm doing the right thing, because sometimes I doubt myself. Um, but thank you, AJ. The gross profit was uh, just over $700,000 from all our events in the 12-month period, which I think is quite good. Um, with gross expenses or the total operating expenses um, coming at six, 630, so you know, $80,000 $80, in profit for the 2000 and 
12 period. Uh, I don't think there's anything in particular in here that's of interest. I think if anyone has any questions, they have printed copies down there. Otherwise, it's all pretty much uh, the same as previous years. And the balance sheet just reflects our equity. Um, we're sitting on uh, just shy of 400,000 in total equity. Um, I'm sorry, can you guys read that? I didn't check. Is that better? I'm sorry. Um, pretend everything I said was correct. Um, and we'll keep going. So yeah, basically the, the net equity is, uh, sorry, 390. That's where we're sitting at as of the 30th of September. Uh, so clearly there's a lot of things that are going to be changing with the LCA run, but we'll, we'll see those reflected next year. So we've had an increase from the previous year of that 70,000, of course. Uh, and we're sitting quite well. So yeah, that's probably about it. Cash flow basically just summarises the profit and loss and how it happened. Um, I, how difficult is it to switch to my laptop for? Because I have a thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I uh, sent this to the list, but separately from my report. The what, sorry? The deed on the island report. The deed on the island Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, th this is probably much more interesting than what I have been showing you. Let's let's zoom in a bit and we'll go over it. Um, oh, you, could, you can read that? All right, so this, the uh, let me make sure I get this right. The blue line is the profit, or the income, and the red line is the expenses. The yellow line is the difference, i.e. the profit or loss. So Bark M, Melbourne, for example, broke quite even, dribbled down under made a small profit. Um, this graph isn't very good for zooming in on. I thought about putting it on a log scale, but that didn't work. Um, the, the issue here is that the LCAs are half a million dollar conferences. So you can see uh, 2011 spent four, sorry, received 400,000 in income and spent about uh, 375, and so their profit's all the way down there. Um, so you're probably wondering what this is. That's Linux Australia spending lots of money. That's, but that, that, <laughs> that, that's. Yeah. <laughs> this is over, uh, since 2009, sorry, 2010, when we started using zero, this is everything Linux Australia has spent. So in that sense, this report's not very good, but it's also, the, the reason why it's over that long period is because this includes every event since 2010. So since 2010, these are the events we have run. This is the money we have spent. So Linux Australia has earned maybe a third of what it spends in interest. So we're operating um, probably more likely only a quarter. So three quarters has to come from the other conferences. Yes, the, the 2010 figures are partial. And 2007 is thanks to James, which was explained last year, where he returned some petty cash. Um, we, no, no, we, we haven't sent him the bill for that. It's about four years um, accumulated interest. So yeah, the LCA is there. It's a good comparison. It shows that they're roughly running the same every year. 20 to 13 there is going to be quite inaccurate because they've got a lot of things. So they're going to change mostly in that expense column. Um, when? Very good question. Uh, 25th, I would say. In fact, I can probably even tell you exactly. 22nd. Yeah, it's best to ignore 2013 until 2013 is finished, right? 
because um, every, every year is different. Some, some people have to pay for venues up front, some year people pay for venues months after the event. Um, so you've got the PyCons, PyCons cost the same to run most years, 2013 hasn't happened yet. WordCamps, they, they seem to line up. And unassigned is generally where we haven't put it in, assigned it. <laughs> um, good question what that unassigned would be, because that's basically from all of these conferences over four years, or three years, sorry, um, we'll add up to that. But uh, yeah, that's, this is just for interest's sake, really. Where the f uh, all all of our conferences have made money. Um, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You you only have to spend like three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred thousand dollars worth of ice creams. Right. So the. I don't like this thing that this thing does. <laughs> one one hand. No, no, I got it. <laughs> okay. Audit. Uh, I don't think I will go over this because it's frankly boring and it's repeating uh, the Treasurer's report. The numbers line up. We're happy with them. Uh, so we have copies up here uncollated. So you get to collate all. Uh, what is it? 19 pages. Yeah. Then you can read it. Um, and other than that, I think I will just see if there's any questions in regards to any of the three things. Oh, yeah. I sent the volunteer away, so I become a volunteer. <coughs> uh, yeah, just as background, I'm not sort of in, you know, I'm not asking this with an agenda. I'm not saying, you know, LA. In my opinion, they, I'll ask the question, and then I'll explain my agenda. I guess. Um, <laughs> I, I think I think it's worth LA reviewing periodically whether having four hundred thousand dollars in assets is appropriate. Um, so I mean, I can easily see that it would be appropriate because the conference is quite the main conference is quite expensive, and having some kind of fallback position from that is good. But I just wanted to find out what your opinion is of holding four hundred thousand dollars in assets. Sure. Um, um, at the end, you know, at the end of each year. Yeah. Can you hear me on this? Yeah. Uh, so, my opinion is we need to spend more money. Uh, the platform that I am standing for pres presidency on is we need more. Well, well, this Australia exists to enable the members to do more stuff, and I want to see the members doing more stuff. This is one of the ways we can help members do more stuff. Now that said, it does need a review, and we do need to work out what we can do uh, feasibly with that money. Uh, to ensure the conference from things like Brisbane flooding, it was going to cost us between fifty and sixty thousand dollars a year. Having uh, three to four hundred thousand dollars sitting in our bank means that an LCA can afford to go completely wrong, and we can still uh, back up the volunteers, reimburse the delegates, fix everything that we need to fix. Uh, and in fact, we wouldn't even need the three hundred thousand to do that because clearly for reimbursing uh, delegates that paid us and then we just have the issues of getting money off vendors we've paid. Clearly that's a very complicated scenario. Uh, so there's, there's two things. The, the, money, the money gives us good in interest. It, it accounts for a quarter of what we spend on administration and grants. Uh, and the money gives us a good security net. Uh, it, it means that LCA is secure. Uh, let's say something completely goes wrong, we just lose all that money. Linux Australia still exists as an entity, we're not bankrupt, we can run the next LCA with a lot more risk associated. Uh, and the third thing is, I want to see more money spent. I don't know how that will look. Uh, it does need a review. My question's kind of related, and I don't particularly have an agenda. Hang on, um, just, just <laughs> one thing. Um, if they're just general questions, can we hold them till other business at the end so we can just get through the whole? Well, it was, it's, it's financial, so. Yeah, the financial stuff. Sure. Do you think it's still appropriate for conferences like LCA to try and make a large profit? We have the safety net now. Effectively, what I do if I make a large profit is I'm pulling more money out of the community than I needed to to run the event. So it, should we still be trying to make a 50k profit with each LCA? Or should we try to rearrange what we're billing people so that we break closer to even 
given we're quite good at removing money from the community and not very good at giving it back, right? Yeah. I, and, and I say this as someone who probably makes a profit target, right? It's not like I'm trying to cover up the fact that, you know, I'm going to yeah, make $12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you, you haven't ordered the ice cream yet. I get that. As of the 22nd, Michael. <laughs> that number doesn't include any of our sponsors. Uh, uh, if I actually, can, if I, can might. I take it? It would if you've invoiced them, actually. Can I take that one? Too? Um, sure. Um, so, potentially, but that means that the grants programs and all the other things that LA does then start just eating into the 400k. So, at current spend rate, that would cost waste, what, right. six, five or six years? Right, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I agree with you because the, the, the alternative to that, John, is. Uh, if we spend more money uh, as LA, it's all going to balance out anyway, yeah, right. to the point where that doesn't happen. What, what you're proposing does is it means that we don't get the opportunity to do more. Uh, by keeping LCA making a profit, it could make less of a profit. In fact, we, we say to LCA, look, we'd like about 40k in return. We, we don't hold LCA to that, we don't really care if they lose money, we've got the safety net, etc. That's just what we aim for. The um, the profit we make from that can go into things like these grants and they can continue to go into them. So yes, if you didn't return a profit, we can still operate quite well, but our bank accounts will go down and eventually it's unstable. Uh, so we need to be doing more stuff rather than doing less. And the other thing is, if, if you wanted to do less initially until we start doing more stuff, well then you've set a precedent and it's very difficult to come back. And let's face it, LCA is still quite a cheap conference, relatively speaking. I I just wanted to make the point that uh, if LCA 2013 this year was held in uh, Brisbane rather than here, you would be covering the cost. Yeah. We almost did the other year. Or Tasmania with the fires. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's. You still need the 20 and whatever. Sir, another financial question. Don't worry about it. So, just wondering, all of the physical assets purchased by LCA for various conferences, how many are the property of LCA afterwards? Or what, what proportion, sorry? Um, good question. Uh, perhaps a better person would be the people involved in LCA currently, uh, to answer that, that is. Uh, assets get murky. They tend to depreciate really, really fast. Uh, and sometimes they're not even worth shipping around. So sometimes the assets actually just get given back to... Um, volunteers, but you know, that's generally the um, invaluable ones. I'm not sure what valuable assets we currently hold yeah, because the APs and things that we have are really out of date and they're not worth anything. Yeah. I mean, there's things like access points that we've bought, they're still lying around, but you know, they were a 5,000k expense in the scheme of things for our budget. It's not a lot. Um, I think we've moved a lot more towards trying to hire things than buy them because at th what ends up costing us a stupid amount of money is just shipping stuff around and storing it. Um, so we're trying to do less and less than that. Um, in terms of other assets, there's some printers, and some network switches, there's a couple of other things. But in terms of, I mean, what we have tried to do in recent conferences, anything like swag, so leftover swag, leftover t-shirts, we've basically said to organisers, give it away, find a charity, give it to your volunteers, just do something with it because it's just not worth shipping. That basically happens conference to conference every year. The very first thing that happens when the gear lands is that an audit gets done and what's no good gets thrown away, what needs to be bought gets purchased, what needs to be leased gets leased. Steve? Yeah, so just to answer that question, uh, Thomas, we did a full audit of all the equipment, went through, uh, we tested as much as we could down to switch ports to work out what was and wasn't functioning and that's what actually led us to approaching Bricard as a sponsor for network equipment for the 2013 conference. Uh, so there's some stuff in there. Um, there are some ongoing relationships and there are some relationships uh, for tech stuff that are now ended as the organisations decide they want to pursue other avenues. So. Uh, I'll just quickly add on as well to bear in mind that the appreciation on assets is usually, you know, for equipment, computer equipment is three years. So then it's pretty much worth nothing. Uh, also, a bunch of it was donation stuff. But there is still some you know, 
very useful stuff that gets shopped around the place that uh, as organisers we find very, very useful. Uh, Alright, if there's another question, so the last piece of business in terms of financials is that, um, I don't know who remembers, but in 2011 uh, in Brisbane we presented, sorry, we weren't prepared to present our 2010 audit. Uh, that was because the financial year ended at Christmas and it was LCA, we don't have time. That was the whole reason for changing the financial year. So we changed the financial year at an SGM, and during that SGM we presented the then prepared audit. Now, Fair Trading New South Wales have uh, informed us that the audit must be presented at an AGM. So when we get to the presenting of things, uh, we will be presenting the 2010 audit as well to be passed by the members. I sent this to the mailing list on Monday or Tuesday, I think. Yeah. Um, so if there are any questions regarding that audit, now is a good time to ask. Bearing in mind, we did pass it on SGM. That's, <laughs> that, that's mute. Uh, cancel. Yeah, that. Other question? Cool. Okay, I, uh, one last one, actually. Do, 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 that's that one. Um, I'll stand in for uh, Peter. Our secretary couldn't make it um, up to LCA this year. Um, so the president's report is nice and brief. Um, at the start of 2012, we had 3,000... 3,100 members roughly. Um, at the start of this year, we roughly had 3,400 members, members. So we've increased by almost 250. Um, we went through a process in the constitutional change, um, mainly Mary's work, to be able to notify members and check if they still wanted their membership to be valid. Um, we didn't end up being able to go through that process this year. Um, so there's still probably a lot of members in those numbers that probably don't consider them members, themselves members of Linux Australia. Um, so we'll. I'll ask them, the new council to try and go through that process in the coming year. Um, okay. Sorry? Oh. If I had to take a guess where the extra 250 came from, I'd say LCA is the usual avenue. I mean, there'd be people through the year, but probably LCA. Um, okay, I'd like to move a motion that the membership accepts the 2012 Office Bearers Report. So that's the President's, Treasurer's and Secretary's. Seconded by Josh Hesketh. All in favour? Yeah. <laughs> it's a valid vote. Opposed? <laughs> abstentions? No abstentions. Uh, passed on opposed. Um, I'd also like to move a motion that we <coughs> members accept the 2012 Auditors Report. Seconded by Terry. All in favour? Opposed? Abstentions? One abstention? Um, or two abstentions? Um, passed? Um, I'd like to propose a motion that the members accept the 20, yes, 2012 auditors report. Sorry, 2010 auditors report. Thank you. Um, seconded by Josh. Uh, all in favour? Opposed? Abstentions? One, two, three, four abstentions, five abstentions. Um, okay, passed. What have we got left here? Okay. Um, sure, why not? I'd like to pass a motion that the membership endorses the actions of the 2012, the 2012 Linux Australia Council. <laughs> Could I have a second from someone that's not a council member? <laughs> Terry. Um, all in favour? Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> One abstention, two abstentions, three, four, let's say four. Um, it's passed, thank you very much. Um, okay, that's pretty much most of the official business, now the one that everyone's been waiting for. Um, I'll pass over to Terry Dawson um, to act as um, returning officer um, and announce the election results. I made the window smaller so we can scroll. So we can scroll the right way. Can everyone read that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Just down arrow. I should work in theory. So, yeah, I, I brought my glasses this year so I can read it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as returning officer, I've satisfied myself that the uh, that the voting was regular, and everything's ordered. Everything's happy. So uh, so without further ado, the uh, president for. Uh, for the incoming council for 2013, with 109 votes, 
is, uh, is Joshua. President. Uh, with uh, there were 100 votes, the candidate needed 51 to win. With a clear majority, was uh, whoops, was Hugh. Uh, for the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> With 103 votes, the majority was Kathy. <laughs> the treasurer, this one will be a surprise to everybody, <laughs> <laughs> was Francois. <laughs> And for the, uh, for the ordinary members, for the council members. You have to scroll quite a bit. Yes, we will have to scroll <laughs> quite a bit. There are 308 votes. Okay, so. Just scroll right to the bottom. <laughs> all the way to the bottom. The results, is it six o'clock? Yeah, the results should be public by now. Uh, I think it was six. All right, so the uh, <coughs> new ordinary members for council for 2013 are Bianca, Josh, and, uh, and Clinton. I guess uh, at this point we should probably thank the outgoing council members for a round of, a, round of applause for the, any of the outgoing council members. For coming to thank you, Terry. Um, okay, I'd like to congratulate the, uh, the incoming council as well. Um, and with that, um, we'll raise um, just general business and questions from the floor. I don't think we had any extra agenda items proposed, so just any general questions. Yes, why are your life so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> I choose not to answer um, that question. Yeah, hi, Paulie Party. Um, sorry for coming late. Um, uh, question about membership. So how do I get to become a member and what's the as of date for, for beginning of membership, end of membership? That's a complicated question. Uh, to become a member, you go to the Linux Australia website and the membership button could probably be a little bit better placed, but there's a membership section at the top. Click on it and register. There's a form that you just fill in. So, uh, so it's not automatic on, on registering for the conference? So it is, but it, unfortunately, it doesn't happen until after the conference. Right. Because so everyone's madly racing to make the conference happen. Ticking the button on the regio form for the conference doesn't actually make your member till afterwards. So right. It's so a bit of a hole in the process. So I was correct in not raising my hand for the votes, but I'm also correct in just sitting here as an observer. Sure, you can be okay. observer. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. And the the as of dates. The, sorry, the which? The the dates. The, you know, if so if I become a member, it's as of the the date my membership becomes, or is it for a calendar date, year, or it's as of the date that it gets approved by the secretary, which will be a week, two weeks, depending on when he goes through and does the next pass. Um, and there is no, ex at this stage, there's no expiration dates on members because we have free memberships. There's a very long thread on the mailing list in the archives if you're interested in the sort of details. Um, there is a process that we've introduced to try and make people not members if they wish not to be. It's a complicated question. Come, to, come and ask me later if you want the, the sort of details. Um, any other questions? Yeah, the regional delegates, um Program. program. Yes. Yeah. Was that opened up to New Zealand as well and did we actually bring anyone over? So it was, actually I think we almost went as far as the Philippines. Yeah, yeah, go for it, Bianca. That'd be great. Uh, it was open to international applicants but due to timing issues they wouldn't have been able to get a visa and still get to the conference because by the time they got it, even if it was done quickly, the conference would have started. But we didn't get any New Zealand applicants. Yep. They were eligible, but we got two, two international applicants, I think. One from India and one from Indonesia, but unfortunately visa issues meant we only brought Australians. Seven. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, can whoever has the other two attendance lists oh, please no, bring them down? Oh, yes, and if, oh, you, okay. if you're here and haven't signed your name, as, sorry, if you're here and a member, can you please make sure that you write your name down on the piece of paper at the end? Um, question over here. The Regional Development uh, Delegate Delegates. Program, uh, how much did they co spend? There was a, a big slot was said, this is for Regional Development. Dele delegates. Yep. One, how much was spent last year, well, this current year, and do you, is there a, a, an idea that perhaps they need to up and, and find more people, or, or such as the international, such as New Zealand, is the program going to expand such that you'll say to New Zealand, why didn't you come and the money's here? Um, we had a budget of $10,000 and I really was under that, but I can't remember how much. Um, it wasn't much. much. It was pretty close. Okay. To Josh might know that. Okay. Or something around yeah. there. 10 k ish but um, the big change I'd like to have with that next year is doing it earlier so international applicants can come. Uh, it's only for LCA, but PyCon has gender diversity grants, which are some similar but only for gender diversity. And Chris just said that it that those PyCon grants don't come out of the LA budget, they're from external grants. And actually that's a good point. I mean, our aim, our preference this year for, us, for it to be a sponsored regional delegates program, but we weren't able to find a sponsor. So any businesses in the room that think that would be a great idea. We may have done a bad job of communicating that to LCA 2013, if that's why your hand is up. <laughs> uh, no, we did. So we, we, would, we would much prefer for it to be sponsored than they come directly out of our budget. I just wanted to say, I think maybe I ran the last RDP under the old scheme in about 2005, right? Which was sponsored by Sun? Yeah, so Sun in 2005 sponsored an RDP. To give you an idea of the budgets, Sun paid e almost exactly half what LA did this time. So this is actually a pretty big deal for a first attempt. Uh, like, sure, maybe the world can be improved, but this was way better than what Sun did before they got bought by someone big and boring. I was just wondering if uh, what your feelings are about the healthiness of the community in terms of proposing future LCAs given the difficulty we had uh, getting bids for next year or if you think the discussion that uh, has resulted, I mean now we have two bids so maybe it's resolved itself or is that something we should be concerned about collectively? I would recommend that as many people as possible come to the LCA 2015 box yep. tomorrow at lunchtime at Afternoon tea at MCC2. So I think that not having bids this year has reinvigorated people a little bit and made them think, hey, we need to do something about this. Um, so look, I have some concerns, but we'll see this year. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, it's, it's pretty simple. If you want to be able to come into LCA in future, then maybe you need to seriously think, hey, I should run LCA in my city. Um, so yes, we'll see. I don't have large concerns. I think at the end of the day, someone is going to step up and put their hand up. I mean, basically what happened this year, we said, hey, we've had no bids, and then we got two. Um, Josh? Sorry. I'd like to add to that, that uh, if you know someone who you think would might like to run it who's not here, you know, that's cool too. Um, and you can just be talking about it. And it's not just necessarily 2015 that you're talking about. Yeah. Talk about 2016 and, and the future. Can we nominate uh, <laughs> de Delegate. No nominations. <laughs> I was just going to say, I mean, I think we're all mindful that uh, many of the people who have run an LCA previously are getting a bit older, they're sort of getting to a stage of life where there's other commitments as well. But having said that, the amount of um, vigour and passion and um, uh, interaction on the list relative to that particular point, I think is more than enough evidence that people care about yeah. it. If there was no discussion of it, it would be a much worse problem than it is. So I think LCAs are very important to everyone in this room, I would imagine. And so. I, mean, look, I think we'll probably be in a position in probably 
10, 15 years, if it's still relevant, where people are going to retirement and then run LCAs because they've got nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Rusty, AJ. It, it was pointed out that Rusty's never run an LCA. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, yeah, just wanted to make uh, yep. two quick points. Uh, for the regional data links program, um, someone should have a chat to me because of how we did in 2010. I might have some thoughts about who to talk to cool. uh, to get things. And uh, secondly, if you are thinking about running an LCA, have a chat to someone who, who has done it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we might not ski you off quite so much. <laughs> I, I think that's one thing worth mentioning. LCA, I think, has been portrayed in recent years as a very difficult and time-consuming thing to run. And... <laughs> Shh, quiet, you two. So look, it, it is. I won't say that it's not. And it does require a commitment, especially in the last couple of weeks leading up. You know, you really need to take the, you know, the, the two weeks before off, probably, if you're a core organiser. But it's, it's not the... the it's not the you know, uh, insurmountable task that I think it regularly gets made out to be. But it's, it's time-consuming, but not difficult. It's actually yes, that's true. It's not difficult, it's time-consuming. And time-consuming can be solved. Yes. So. And there's some... There, wait till next year, but I think some in interesting things may be afoot there to help that out. But it's worth saying, John. Yes. There's no, no lead organiser or any pre previous LCA will put up their hand and say that they regret that they did. Yep. But it was worth it. Yeah. More questions? No one? Anyone? <laughs> uh, just as one last thing. Um, actually, no, I'll, oh, it doesn't matter. Um, actually, I'll close the meeting first and then make that last announcement. Um, I will move that we close the meeting at 6.22. I didn't even open the meeting. Close the meeting at 6.22. <laughs> uh, second. Mary, all in favour? All opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Okay, I'm closing the meeting. Um, uh, what I want to say is James Bromberger um, from Amazon Web Services um, has kindly offered to donate um, ten? Yeah. yeah. Ten five hundred dollar vouchers of credit on AWS. So any lugs um, that are interested and could use some services on AWS, um, please have a chat to James, um, and he can help you out. <laughs> Thank you all.